Hello, everyone. Welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, we're going to be starting off a new segment titled SRMJ Triple E Search. Here, we're going to be looking at some sample questions which we can use to study for the SRMJ Triple E exam. Today, we're going to be looking at some questions from chemistry. So let's start off. Let's look at this question. In the extraction of copper, the metal is formed in the Bessemer converter due to the reaction. Copper sulfate, Cu2S plus 2Cu2O gives 6Cu plus SO2. Cu2S plus 2Cu... Cu2S gives 2Cu plus S. Fe plus Cu2O gives 2Cu plus FeO. 2Cu2O gives 4Cu plus O2. So, how do we solve this question? Well, it says that the question says that we're undergoing the extraction of copper and the process the reaction is asked for is the reaction that is occurring in the Bessemer converter so when we come across the extraction of copper you notice that copper is uh, a, an element that does not react very well so it's like it's a metal that's less reactive and for metals that, ha that are less reactive, we usually form sulfides. We form sulfides of those metals once we extract them from the ores. And then these sul sulfides are roasted, which means burned in excess of oxygen and then we get the metal itself before the final cleaning now in the Bessemer converter what we get is copper mat which is basically Cu2S now this copper mat is converted to copper and in order to do that we need to roast copper mat so therefore we should we will uh, mix Cu2S with oxygen so Cu2S plus 2 Cu2S plus O2 will give us Cu2O plus o SO2 so when copper mat reacts with oxygen we get copper oxide and SO2 now, th while this process is happening, another process involving Cu2S and Cu2O happens as well. So Cu2S plus Cu2O gives us copper and SO2. So, therefore, since we have excess of oxygen, both reactions happen at the same time. While the so, therefore, um, we finally get copper from the Bessemer converter. Now among the following options it is clear that option A is the correct answer because this reaction in option A is the balanced version of the reaction that we wrote down here. So if you have Cu2S uh, reacting with 2 Cu2O you get 6 copper and SO2 and you can check that out and it fits. All the other options are incorrect because in option C iron is used which is incorrect. Um, again, we have Cu2S forming Cu plus S. Again, that doesn't happen in term in in the presence of roasting. And then option D is Cu2O. Again, breakdown of copper oxide into copper and oxygen. But then in the Bessemer converter, we have auto reduction where there is no extra um, reactant needed to reduce co copper oxide. So therefore, option A is the correct option. Now let's look at another question. Which of the following is the best method for reducing 3-bromopropanol to 1-bromopropane? This is a question on organic chemistry. Now we have four, three reactions given. We have four options. We need to find out which of these is the correct one. So first let's look at the question. We need to reduce one compound, 3-bromopropanol, to 1-bromopropane. Now, 
if you notice, the first compound has the suffix al, which means that this is an aldehyde. On the other hand, 1-bromopropane has the suffix ain, which means this is an alkane. An aldehyde is any organic compound with the functional group CHO, while an alkane does not have any functional group. However, it only has single bonds between each carbon atom. So we need to find out which of the following methods is the best for converting an aldehyde to an alkane. Now we have three equations here, the Wolf-Kishner reduction, the Clemenson reduction, and the Stephens reduction. Now the Stephens reduction is used to change nitriles to aldehydes. So if you use it on an aldehyde, it would not work. So Stephens reduction doesn't work. Now what about Wolf-Kishner and Clemenson's reduction? Um, if we look at option A, Wolf-Kishner's reduction, in this case, the aldehyde does turn into an alkane of the same order. But in order to undertake Wolf-Kishner reduction, we need to use hydrazine and KOH, which is potassium hydroxide. Now the problem with this particular reaction is the fact that we have a bromine atom added to the aldehyde in question. So if we use the Wolf-Kishner reduction, the bromine atom might get replaced. Because the Wolf-Kishner reduction would also remove any other groups apart from the functional group. So therefore, the Wolf-Kishner reduction cannot be used. Now, since the Wolf-Kishner reduction is option A, that means option C cannot be used, which means that the only option that can be used is option B, Clemenson reduction. Now, why B is correct and C is not is because in C, we say you can either use the Wolf-Kishner or the Clemenson reduction, which is incorrect because the Wolf-Kishner reduction cannot be used for this particular scenario. The Clemenson reduction is being used. So therefore, option B is the correct option. Now, in option B, you can see that the aldehyde is mixed with zinc amalgam, which is a mixture of zinc and mercury, and concentrated at Cl. And then that turns the aldehyde into an alkane of the same order. So therefore, option B is the correct option. Now, that concludes this episode of SRMJ Triple E Search. We hope you found this episode informative and interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Agile Rank Mate, your partner in education. If you like the video, you can like it, share it with your friends, and also press the notifications icon in order to get more updates about our latest videos. So, until the next webisode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.